G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Welcome to the long-awaited gameplay on the F5A Freedom Fighter, which is ironically in the Chinese tree. You might be thinking, well, the Freedom Fighter is an American vehicle, and it was heavily used by the Chinese, specifically the Republic of China's Air Force, but yeah, we have it here in the Chinese tech tree. And so, we're going to have a look at it. And to me, this plane is extremely exciting. First of all, have a look at how small this thing is. It is smaller than a MiG-21, and MiG-21s, MiG-19s, MiG-15s, MiG-17s are very small planes. I don't know why, but the Russians liked to keep their planes compact. The Freedom Fighter is very low to the ground, very compact, and is extremely maneuverable. This plane is so lightweight and so small that it doesn't even have room in the nose for a radar. And that we'll talk about a little bit later. But um, for me, I'm absolutely sold on this plane. It is insanely good. It is great fun. It lacks in a couple of areas, but where it lacks, it basically more than makes up for in others. To me, the Freedom Fighter is somewhere between, I would say, the A6M0 of jets and the Meteor of jets. Uh, sorry, not the Meteor, the Comet of jets. It performs extremely strange, and it lacks a couple of key important things that make the jets at that tier competitive. For example, at the tier of the Comet, the ME163, its uh, main competitors have a lot more fuel and more friendly guns than the uh, others. So, for example, the Meteor Mark III, it's got some pretty good guns, it's got some all-around good features, so does the F-80A, but the Comet is extremely specialised in one area, and the Freedom Fighter is very similar, uh, except it's specialised in the avionics area. You see, this plane doesn't have a radar, doesn't even have a radar gun sight. I don't know if it should have it, but to me, I don't really care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference gameplay-wise. And so, this plane does not have a radar, does not have RWR, and does not have flares. This makes it a little bit of a tricky choice when it comes to, uh, sort of, what you should do with it. And for me, I have found a playstyle that works extremely well. And that is quite simple. You basically use your great acceleration, or your decent acceleration, to stay low. And then when your opponents are sort of above you a little bit, you zoom up to them where it's appropriate. You see, you might get enemies that don't really climb, like these two mirages here. This particular mirage is going to be in a bit of a tricky situation in a moment if he isn't careful. And of course, you have your options for dogfighting, because this thing is so light, you can out dogfight Delta Wing aircraft. I haven't tried it against the Draken yet, but I certainly have tried it against the Mirage, and you're about to see this exactly uh, unfolding in front of your eyes. It is truly magnificent to watch. You can, in certain circumstances, outdo a Mirage in a dogfight. Here I am, I'm going to go for a vertical turn fight. I'm just sort of testing the waters here, figuring out what the plane's good at. Um, this was one of my first flights, and this was done on stream on patch day. Don't worry, I have more current footage uh, towards the end of the video, but you can see here I thought I was in a little bit of a pickle, but then I had a look at the attitude of the Mirage, and it was basically in the same situation as me. And I thought, why is a Delta Wing aircraft losing at a dogfight? But in real reality, the Delta Wing doesn't exactly give you low speed handling. What it does give you is exceptional AOA, meaning that you can snap onto targets fairly easily, and it does give you a little bit of lift at those low speeds, but nothing, especially in War Thunder, compensates better in a turn fight than being light and having lots of acceleration. This is why things like the G91 do really well in low to medium speed dogfights, because they have acceleration and they are extremely light. This is very much like a G91 in, at, at its tier. Uh, of course, like the G91YS and the G91R1 and Pre-Siri, I'm going to call it the G91 Pre because I can't speak Italian and I don't want to butcher it. So the G91 Pre is, is a good example of this where it doesn't quite have the mechanisms and the mechanics to deal a lot of damage for example. But I'll tell you what, in a dogfight like this it is exceptional. And because I'm using a little bit of air brake and a little bit of flaps and a little bit of uh, throttle control, particularly with that afterburner, then I am basically able to just about get on top of the Mirage in this scissor here. Remember to keep your tight your turns extremely tight like I've done here and the Mirage has realized that he does not have many options left. He's about to go vertical here, I'm going to spray him down and get a nice kill. Um, that was kind of ruined by the MiG-21 Biss here but you know what, that's okay because 
Uh, I have a friendly and it worked out well for me, but you know, I would have loved to have seen that all the way through. Now, speaking of not wanting to see it all the way through, the MiG-21 BIS has brought a friend here. This is an FG-1, and FG-1s are a lot heavier than Mirages, but you know what? I'm not going to even bother with the Mirage here. Uh, sorry, with the, the MiG-21 and his friend with the FG-1, because that's going to be dealt with very, very quickly. The Mirage, however, needs a little bit of AIM-9P fun. And of course, as the F5A, you manage to uh, sort of scrape along with two. And I believe uh, later variants of the F5 managed to scrape along with two Sidewinder missiles. Um, I think it was until the F20, which is like a revised version. Um, that's my understanding of it. It's like a, I don't know, I guess it's like taking the good things about it, or kind of like going from certain plane that's like pretty good and just gutting it from the insides and redoing it so it looks like the same plane on the outside but on the inside it's totally different different avionics etc um I, I believe that's what happened to the f20 um or what the f20 is uh someone let me know in the comment section below and someone also let me know what other planes or other things did the same thing i'm pretty sure there was a tank or two that were like total revisions i can't remember them at the moment though what I can remember is AIM-9P plus maneuverability plus acceleration equals fun. And that's exactly what's happening here. We have an F4E heading towards me, but the Mirage is the one that I'm going to be concentrating on. The Mirage is going to be the bigger of the threats because basically it can turn with me and the Phantom can't. And whilst I can bleed as much energy as I'd like uh, and sort of try and fight the Phantom that way and the Phantom does have an advantage in that respect. I have a MiG-21 with me and the Mirage is a bigger threat to the MiG-21 than the Phantom is because the Mirage is both fast and maneuverable whereas the Phantom is only fast and so I'm picking my target here based on which is going to be the bigger threat and I'm thinking of not just myself but of course of my teammates if I can. Now the MiG-21 has continued forward and I believe is sort of I'm not exactly sure what he's doing but the Mirage has decided to bugger off and I'm going to chase the Mirage. Now, is the Phantom going to be chasing me? I think it is. And this leaves me in a situation where I think I'm in a 2 versus 1. I don't know where the MiG has gone. And that's okay because I have the maneuverability to deal with the Phantom. And no matter how much air brake the Phantom pulls, even on full afterburner, I am pretty confident that I can keep with this Phantom in a turn fight. And you bet your ass I can. I'm going to warm up or I'm going to prep a... Uh, nice little aim nine but i'm gonna go for the spray with the guns first to, just to see if i don't have to spend a missile in him, and i get a critical hit now if i needed to finish him off quickly i could prep another missile and have it on its way and i think that's what i might be doing here just just in order to sort of get myself that kill hurry up and uh sort of go on my way but it turns out the f4e puts on smoke he, i think he realizes he's pretty much fucked so i think what i'm gonna do here is just pull on a little bit further and go for the guns. You see, with your missiles, you don't really want to be wasting them. And of course, I set him on fire with some 20mm cannons. These 20 mils aren't as effective as I would like them to be, but don't worry, they are still plenty good when you have the aim. And of course, when you control your, your shots. For me, that's the real important thing. Controlling your ammunition, not spraying too much, and targeting your bursts very, very specifically. Saving those shots. Of course, spraying can get you kills, but I really definitely advise against that. So, what have we got here? We have an interesting situation. Once again, we have a Mirage, which is, I believe, the same one from earlier, and an F-104, who is also looking extremely tasty, both looking at the MiG-21 and seeing he is extremely tasty. So, I have a friend in need, and uh, that means that I have a missile that I need to send and some guns that I need to fire. Who do I prioritize what, though? Now, I know that I could probably get the F-104 here with the guns because he is facing towards me, and I very luckily do so. Uh, the Mirage is heading straight towards me, and so I go vertical and try and engage in a turn fight here. But, as you can see, I am looking a little bit sad in terms of my pilot. I don't think I have the crew skills at the moment, and um, maybe I can just get on top of him just enough in order to get the kill. But, um... In this situation here, you can see he's smoking. He looks like he might be in a bad way, and uh, just as I fire my missile, unfortunately, my uh, kill gets stolen by the AA. Unfortunate, but uh, yeah, that's how the cookie crumbles. Anyways, if uh, this particular match or these last two matches didn't really sell you on the capabilities of the F5, we're going to have a look at another one. 
So, we're having a look here at our lovely map, Al 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 El Alamein. Uh, and of course, with this map comes a little bit of a pattern. Now, in the case of this particular plane, fighting on the uh, Chinese side, you often get paired with the MiGs. And it's not an entirely bad thing. It's just that you very rarely face things like a MiG-21 BIS. And of course, I believe that fully you could outdog fight a MiG-21 BIS if they got into it. But uh, in this case, you'll mostly be seeing Phantoms. And the Phantoms are extremely quick. And so you kind of need to rely on Phantoms uh, basically turn fighting with you. So in most cases, you are basically going to be picking up the scraps. Unless, of course, all of your opponents end up dogfighting you. Which we'll have a look at a little bit later. But um, in this case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of put myself in a situation where I can't be sniped by AIM-7s. That is my number one priority. I don't want to be hit by those because they are, are undetectable to me. I can't visually see them unless someone is firing them in my visual range. Um, and that is literally where my camera is pointed. And so I'm getting a bunch of phantoms at this point popping in and out from around me. Now, I don't really want to be turning too much to engage enemies like just any old enemy i want to pick my target very specifically and i'm looking around here to see which one is going to be most suitable and so i think i'm going to pick this a7 because he's not concentrating but uh it looks like he is going to be a guns target and because he's flying in a straight line is a very very easy kill so what's going to be happening next i'm looking around scanning for a new target and it looks like maybe that phantom is going to be the key to my success um, but there was, of course, another Phantom that was unspotted, or sorry, an A7. And I think, um, in case any of my teammates decide to commit to a head-on with him, uh, I think I need to take him out as not a priority target, but uh, one of some importance. And so, at 3 kilometers, the AIM-9P should have plenty of range, and just as he drops his bombs on the base, I managed to secure a nice little kill. So, who is next on the menu? It is probably going to be this Phantom, because, again... Phantoms have a lot of ordnance, and the fact that they're sort of able to fly around and float around in sort of this situation is a little bit dangerous, provided that they have targets to shoot at. But if I can keep them busy, or if someone can keep them busy for me, then I have a bit more of a chance to um, really make the most of my plane. And so I'm going to be chasing this Phantom here, uh, keeping an eye, of course, on the Phantom above me. And I've noticed that he's a little bit distracted, so if I can burst up to him, and it looks like I can, I'm closing in that distance of 3 kilometers, and he is going a lot slower than I realized. I managed to get a really, really lovely little kill on that Phantom. But uh, I'll tell you what, this particular this match isn't really anything special. I mean, 3 kills is really nice, but have a look at what happens next. So once this Phantom inevitably meets his maker by some miracle or some misfortune we're going to be doing something that is a little bit unconventional now one thing that american props are really good at is ground pounding and whilst this phantom is not really going to last much longer because whilst he's quick uh there are missiles that are much quicker let's be real sometimes you just have an enemy that isn't really going to give a fight and of course, if you're an F4E, one of your best strategies is just to stay fast. And of course, unfortunately, the F5 is not a fast plane. It's about as fast as the T2, which is a 10 set, uh, which is a tenno. And uh, with only two missiles, you might be thinking that's a little bit odd. But of course, having 20 mm cannons is uh, a bit of a bonus because you can be taking out pillboxes while that happens. And of course, you can take out plenty and you have plenty of ammunition for it. That is one of the real bonuses of the American jets. They have weird armor-piercing qualities on their 20 mils that just gives them an ability to take out targets like this. The Soviets have the NR-30, of course, but honestly, nothing quite beats the American 20 mils. And I don't know what it is, but American 20 mils have a thing for pillboxes. You just aim for the little slit in the pillboxes, and um, Bob's your uncle, really. It's not really that hard. So, the um, F5 just has this strange, strange little knack for, um, for pillboxes. So, if that's not sold you, well, let's check out this. So, moving on to this last particular match, and this match kind of took me by surprise, but at the same time, not really. 
Uh, this is the most recent of all of them, and I have to say I was quite surprised when I played this particular match. Um, but like I said, it's not really surprising, guarantee, uh, guaranteed, judging by the way that this thing flies. Now, of course, you are a support fighter. Unfortunately, you are relegated to that role, but you're not bad in that role. And there are certainly times where your abilities in that role can absolutely change the face of a match. So, we're going to have a look at this particular match and just sort of show you the absolute lunacy that can unfold while playing the F5. So, FG1 here, I'm not going to risk that missile and a little bit of a spray, not really going to gain anything. Uh, next target here, not the F4C because he's travelling too fast and I would have to expend too much energy in order to uh, fight him. But the Mirages, oh boy. There are about three Mirages there looking straight at me, and as you know, Mirages are very juicy targets. Especially Mirages that aren't paying attention, and I realised he was a little bit slow. And then as I cl close in a lot quicker, I just didn't realise how slow this guy was. He's going directly vertical, and with a bit of spray and a bit of learn to play, I uh, managed to take him out. So, who is next again on the menu? I'm looking there at the Mirage again, because Mirages are... Basically, the MiG-21's worst enemy. So, AIM-9P for you, and maybe I should prep an AIM-9P for someone else. I see an enemy underneath me, uh, but it doesn't look like he's enough of a threat to worry about. I'm going to spray a little bit to try and get rid of this Mirage. I crit him, he's going to go down, and I check behind me, and there is a Phantom right underneath me. Um, surprised that he didn't spot me, but I guess he was tunnel-visioned on the MiG too much, and this Phantom here coming in is also tunnel-visioned on the MiG very very much i'm going to maybe launch an f uh, an aim9p at him but i decide against it and instead i'm going to go for this phantom here all of these enemies are ridiculously slow that phantom is really really slow and my missile just somehow somehow tracks and i somehow managed to avoid the other mig 21 i set this guy on uh, very brown alert mode because he is now doing some funny maneuvers bleeding a lot of speed and um I, I don't know, he's just he's just doing things, so I have to be really careful. But I also have a little bit of an advantage here, because I don't have a smoking engine, and he does. And that would reduce his top speed by a fair amount. He's got no choice, he's just going to turn around, and I'm going to try and finish him off. Uh, guess who misses? It's uh, yours truly, because I suck. Anyway, I have a little bit of spray, and I managed to burn his engine out. No big deal there, and of course, this leaves me with an X mysteriously, and of course... How many of these are we going to get? Another slow phantom. This is the absolute death for an F4. Being slow is your is your worst enemy. And of course, just as I managed to set him on fire, I run out of ammunition. Six kills. Not bad for a support plane. That that is the power of the F5. The Freedom Fighter exceeds in a support role. It doesn't have the avionics, it doesn't have anything special, you are not going to be the first on the on the floor, on the uh, on the battlefield. And you're not going to be pushing the limits of uh, any power creep or anything like that. But I tell you what, you are going to be an excellent support fighter. And when the time is ready, you're going to be there. And you're going to pick off every single slow plane that is there. And you're going to do it better than all the others. Because you have the maneuverability, you have the AOA, you have the acceleration, and you have that energy retention in a turn. These are the things that make a support fighter great. And having this added to the game as a support fighter in its current state at the moment is absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love it. And if you aren't sold on it, then maybe give it a go. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for dealing with my uh, dry throat ass. Anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it nonetheless. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.